In this video, I'm going to teach you the best way to make the perfect Poffin for your Pokemon for any type of contest that you want to compete in. For the sake of this video, you can see we are located in Heart Home City, roughly in the middle of the map. Now, before we get into the perfect Poffin making recipe, there is something that I want to share with people, which I don't know if a lot of people have noticed, but every Pokemon's nature. So if you go to a Pokemon much like my Infernape over here, I check summary and I go to the first page on the right. Now this one will say this Pokemon is pretty hardy by nature. And if you look right at the bottom, it says it happily eats anything, which is great because it has no preference. The Luxray, however, you can see has a bold nature over there. And right at the bottom, it says it likes sour food. Now what this means is when a Luxray eats sour type Poffins, it will actually get a huge, a much more beneficial increase to sour food in its in the genre. And if you look at the chart that I made here, sour is the tough attribute, the tough kind of thing. So if you make tough puffins for this Luxray and you feed it to it, it will benefit from sour puffins increasing the toughness by a lot more than it when it's fed to other Pokemons because of its nature. However, this does come with a catch, which a few people don't know. So because the natures have these effects for the different likes, like the bold one likes the sour puffins, however, it dislikes spicy puffins. So if you feed it a spicy puffin, it's not really going to have the greatest effect. It's going to go up a whole lot slower. So if you're trying to raise coolness on a Pokemon that has a bold nature, it's not really going to work the way you want it to. And you'll notice there are four natures that like bitter, dry, sweet, sour, spicy. And there are five that have no preference, where they don't have an increase, it's kind of just even across all of them. As you can see on screen here, you can just pause where you want to find different natures that your Pokemon is, and to find what they dislike, obviously on the right, what they like in the middle. Just so you know what to feed them, because you don't want to waste time trying to feed a, like, a Feebas, who you want to feed dry puffins to get the beauty up so that you can evolve it into a Mealotic. But if it has a nature where it hates dry puffins, you're going to have a horrible time. And the reason for that is is because every time you feed a puffin to a Pokemon, its sheen goes up. Basically, it's like a counter of how many puffins it can eat. You can see it by all the sparkles in the sheen bar there, right? So I have like one more space to feed it one more puffin over here. I already have this um, Infernape at like the maximum coolness. And I'm also feeding it some of the dryness, which is like the beauty aspect here. So you can see its coolness and its beauty is quite high up there. And right now, we've actually filled up that whole sheen bar. If you see that whole sheen bar, it has sparkles in every single section all the way to the right, that means it's full. It won't, it, won't, it won't eat another one here. It will say it won't eat anymore. And there's no way to bring the Sheen Bar down. That, that Pokemon now, its Sheen Bar is full and it will always be full. There's no way to reset it. The only other way to take that Pokemon and change the way it is, is to catch a new, a new one of that Pokemon and start from the beginning. But luckily, I'm here to try help you make the best Poffin so that you can benefit the most. So when you look at your berries, you can actually do a view tag. This is just from your pockets here. You can see each berry has a, a chart there that indicates here, like this one here is more of a bitter and a little bit of spicy and a little bit of dry. So you can use it in recipes that use spicy, dry, and bitter. Bitter is probably its best one. If you look at the tomato, it's mostly spicy, secondly dry, and then the other three are quite low. You want to use berries that have the highest effect of the different ones. And you'll see some of the berries have different multiple versions like this one is a spicy and dry so if you're trying to go coolness and beauty at the same time this is a good berry to use now when you use a lot of berries that use different flavors like one has a lot of spicy one has a lot of dry and maybe you have some sour in it as well and obviously you only use each berry once you don't ever put more than one berry anything like i mentioned in a previous puffin making video you'll get puffins that say rich puffin it will look great and you'll think oh god i've made a terrible piece of crap but it's actually really good a rich puffin actually increases the effects of all three aspects or however many aspects were included in your berries flavor and you can see this in the puffin case here when we look at these puffins here you can see on the left there it will highlight the different flavors like the the red is the coolness the blue is the dry beauty and then the green is the bitter smart so that puffin there will actually increase all three of those aspects of whoever or whichever pokemon eats the puffin so it's a nice way to actually like increase multiple stats or multiple different attributes in one puffin and you can see right after you feed it here it says there coolness beauty cleverness all increase and it also shows how it increases on the chart and you want to try do this with like puffins that are level 37 or higher. You want to get like the highest maximum benefit because of the sheen, which limits how many puffins your Pokemon can eat. So once you get like one of the stats to highest, you don't really want to feed them that kind of puffin flavor anymore. You want to kind of focus on some of the others, depending on what contest you're trying to enter the Pokemon into. So to summarize, when you go and you make a new puffin here, you can look at the berries here and you can actually press the Y button to open up this chart here, which is nice and easy because you can see the flavors here and then you can back out and say, okay, no, don't want that one. Don't want this one. Don't want 
don't want that one. Okay, let's look at the pomeg. It has spicy, it has sweet, it also has bitter. That's nice, I'll put it in there. We're trying to focus on ones that mainly have spicy, so if it doesn't have a high spicy one, then we can use it. Like this Raz one here has spicy and dry. We can we can throw that in there for the extra spicy benefit. And then we're probably going to end up using the uh, cherry or the figgy, which also increase spicy only. They only increase uh, the spicy uh, flavor. And you use those and you start making the puffin. As a rule of thumb, at the beginning of the puffin making, I only use one joystick, just with my thumb, just slowly, just rolling it like this. The only change you make is once the, like, the whole pot goes purple like that on the sides, then you start using the other thumb and you start rotating in the same directions. Just with both thumbs, it doesn't really take a lot of effort. You're probably not going to get drift like this because you actually don't have to turn the joysticks that fast or that quick. You just kind of just turn them with two thumbs and you'll get this here. So first stage, one thumb, second stage, two thumbs. Easy. You should get a nice rich puffin that includes all of the flavors that we included with the berries so that when you feed this to the Pokemon, it will benefit in all those things like we just showed you with the Infernape earlier. And that is everything I have to tell you about puffins. If you didn't know anything in this video, that is good. I'm glad to teach you, and thank you so much for watching.